This is the intro jingle. This is the K-Pop DevOps Show with Eric Nam. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, welcome to the Tebox Show. Today we have a catching up episode with a very special guest. You may know him for for many things, but um, I guess most most of you may know him for his his amazing group, 2 p.m. Uh, you guys already know. You guys read the description. I'm just going to introduce you. <laughs> you have Nick Kuhn here. Hey, what's up, hey guys? <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> that was a really lackluster… What an introduction. To, thank you. I wanted to build it up, but then what I was like… Introduction. I was going to get really embarrassed as I built you up. So I was like, I'm going to just stop. Yeah, I just say… Yeah. Yeah. How it's are me. You? Yeah. Hi, say hello. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm Nick Kuhn from 2 p.m. Um, I've been wanting to get on this show for a while, but this guy's too busy for me, so… <laughs> no. Oh, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm just oh, kidding. Wow. I'm honored. Thank you. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. How are yeah. you? Good. Yeah. Last time I saw you was at my house. Right? Yeah, that was that was like what two months ago? Is it longer? I have no idea. I don't I have no idea. You you finished something and you came over. Yeah. But welcome to the show. We're excited. Thank to have you. you. Thank you for having me. Thank yeah, you for having absolutely. Me. Um, so pretty much catching up these episodes. Okay. We kind of talk about how you got to where you are mm-hmm. and what you've been up to recently. Okay. So nothing complicated, nothing crazy. Okay. We do have some fan questions and a little little quiz at the end, which I think is fitting because you just started emceeing a quiz show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but that's it. We're going to just jump into it and um, just ask, how are you? I'm, I'm good. As good as I could be yeah. during this crazy times. You know, it's just like… Um, when I work, I just work. When I don't work, mm. I'm just like at home, just Mm-mm-mm. you know, on my PS4 or work out. Oh, well, during this when we were filming this, it's like it's, it was still a 2.5. Right. So you can't go to the gym. So can't go to the gym. So I'm just like free waiting at home, just hanging. Yeah. But you got a cool spot. You have like you got your big TV. So you like got- <laughs> like I I. I I decorated my house so that like I don't I would never have to leave. Oh, uh, okay. Like I got everything like yeah. just right, just right where there. I want them to be, and um, yeah. Boom. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. I've just been podcasting my life mm-hmm. away. Literally, <laughs> feel like this is all I do. Because there's nothing else we could do. There isn't. Point. But you know what? Honestly, it's great because it gives me an excuse to see people like yourself, to see you know Jesse or BM or whoever mm-hmm. like. Uh-huh. There's a reason for mm-hmm. us to like hang out and just talk. And I think the other thing is whenever I have these conversations, I end up knowing more about whoever, yeah. the friend, than I did before. Yeah, because you know, before before the, the night you came over to my house, we we never really talked. We never really hung We would hung say out. hi, yeah. we would like we would say hi, we'd be like, hey, let's hang out soon. But like we never really talked until yeah. you came over and like, oh man, we have a lot in common and yeah. we just you know, we just connected. We did. Yeah. It was it was a good time. And then it was always funny because I felt like whenever <laughs> we'd always like text each other or DM. Yeah, yeah. We're in the same country but in a different place. I know. And always missing each other by day. Like that one time I, I was in the States yeah. right before the, the pandemic started in right. the States. Um, you were doing a tour. Yeah. And um, I was there with my family and I was, I was going to do this whole road trip from Napa Valley down to yeah. LA. And we kept… Literally each other. just missing each other. Yeah, but like I was in this. I was just there. Yeah, like, uh, I was gonna be here. Oh, I'm gonna be here. Yeah. So I mean, I'm glad we got to connect, and mm-hmm. I'm glad you're here. Um, I feel like uh, obviously for people who are fans of Tebox Show, it's it's a treat for them because they get to hear their favorite artists speak in in English, in English, and just talk about whatever people talk in about. English. In English. A lot of people forgot that I'm not Korean. Right. Do you yeah. get that a lot? Yeah. I sometimes I do. You forget too. <laughs> like I'm like, this is so it's just so natural to me, like eating Korean food or like just just saying Korean words. Uh-huh. I'm like, oh wait, I wasn't born here. <laughs> uh, this yeah, uh, this is not really home for me, but it already feels like home for me because I've been living here for 14 years now. That's that's longer than I've lived anywhere else in the wow. world. Because I was born in LA, mm-hmm. um, lived there. F- until I was two. And then we moved to Thailand. And I lived there for like 10 years. Mm. And I moved to New Zealand for like two years oh, for wow. school. And then I moved to America for high school. And then I came here in 2000, 2006. And I've been here ever since. That's wild. That's a, yeah. that 14 years. Yeah, that's a long time. Sheesh. And it went by like oh, so man. quickly that… um. 
it felt like yesterday when I landed here and um, my manager took me to eat um, bulgogi oh. for like the first time. What was that experience like? And I was like, oh, this is yummy. <laughs> this is yummy. And like, it was like early in the morning I landed. I think it was like 5 a.m. The 5 a.m. Flight? Yeah. flight from LA? From LA. Yeah. And then we had that bulgogi. And then he took me to Sukso, and the first guy I saw was Jun Kei. Oh, okay. He can speak English. He's, his his English is actually pretty. Oh, good. really? So he was the, the like my first friend. Oh. In 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 Korea. Okay. He would t- he would take me to places. Um, he knew I like Heineken, <laughs> so he would call himself, "I'm your Heineken brother." Ah. Uh. He introduced me to most of my friends. Really? That um, it, most of my friends in Korea. Okay. So I have like friends who we've been in touch. Uh, we've been in touch. And we've been friends for like 14 years ever wow. since I came to Korea. So that's wild. I mean, for for you know, I have these stats here where mm-hmm. it's like you were you know Thailand, mm-hmm. to New Zealand, and et cetera, et cetera. But I guess for people who don't know, who aren't aware, how did you end up? Here. Here. What happened? As me, as a uh, TVM. Yeah. Um, I, went to, I went to this Korean festival in, in downtown LA, uh-huh. in K-Town. Yeah. Because um, when I was living in America, in, in California, I would say I'm from LA, but I'm actually from Rancho Cucamonga, which is like around an hour from, okay. from LA. And if, you know, in California, if you don't, in America… Mostly in California. If you, if you don't have… Before Uber. Yeah. If you don't have a car, you can't go anywhere. Right. You're trapped. Except for your tongue, you know? Uh-huh. <laughs> like your, 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 your hood. Yeah. So um, I never really went into LA until that day. Um, my friends were like, hey, let's go. There's, there's like this um, concert with like a bunch of… There was G.O.D. and R.G. Oh. And a bunch of like other… Singers coming. I didn't know any of them. Uh-huh. So I, I was watching the, the concert and um, some lady approached me speaking uh-huh. Korean. Okay. And I'm like… No idea. No idea what you're saying. <laughs> still talking to me lady. I, I still don't know what you're saying. But then next to her was a, a translator. Uh-huh. Was like, um, she's from JYP. And um, she would like you to follow her back to the hotel <laughs> to tape an audition. I'm like… Wait, what? That does not sound <laughs> sketchy suspicious. at all. Like I would be killed in yeah. your hotel. I don't know. Like um, yeah. so I said no. Uh. Um, and the fact that I had no talent at all was so <laughs> like I was never interested in in, in entertainment. Oh, except for piano. Okay. Like I liked to play the piano yeah. back then, but nothing like singing or dancing. Uh. I couldn't even speak in front of the class. Oh, so you're very shy. I got like so nervous. Yeah, uh. but um, anyway, like they kept calling me within like that week. Because before they, they would have to come back to Korea. Mm. They were like, I need to get you on tape. I need to get you on tape. I'm like, nope, nope, nope. Mm. Until they were like, okay, we just want to we just wanna sit down and talk to you. So we'll go to you. To okay. Rancho Kukumunga, which is like 50 miles from, from LA. So they came to, to my tongne. And uh, we sat down at a coffee shop. Mm. Starbucks. Yeah. At the busiest time, around 8 p.m. Uh-huh. When people were there studying yeah. and talking business and… And they, uh, we were talking inside and they set up the camera outside of Starbucks. Shut up. No yeah. way. <laughs> That's where I taped my audition. So you taped an audition right in, front of in Starbucks. like a parking lot essentially? So <laughs> no, no. Like parking lots here. Uh-huh. Um, a little walkway, sidewalk thing. Starbucks. I was on the sidewalk. Just That right is there. wild. And um, yeah. Um, I did everything that they asked me to. What do. was the weird… What, what did they ask you to do? I guess… Like, well, first they, they had me stand in front of the cam- yeah. camera and they were like, introduce yourself mm. in all the languages you can speak. It was just English and Thai. Uh-huh. Um, and then do some poses. Poses. Like, like mm. modeling. Yeah. So I was like… <laughs> it's him. It was really it's awkward. The one. <laughs> it was really awkward. And they were like, okay, sing something. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know how to sing. Just, I just, it's okay, just sing. We just uh, want to hear your anything, voice. Yeah. So I sang um, "All or Nothing" by O Town. Ooh, what a song! What a hit! I want it all, nothing nothing at all. At all. Yeah, I sang that song because that was like the last song that I was listening to with my friends. Uh, uh, sang that song, embarrassed, and that wasn't enough for them. Right? They were like, 
I, this is this kid is not embarrassed enough. <laughs> so we're gonna make him even more embarrassed. Yeah. Pulled up escal his there they they rode in in um escalate right. Uh-huh. Pulled that up right in front of Starbucks. Rolled down the windows. Oh. Cranked up yeah by Usher. <laughs> so everyone in Starbucks were was just was staring like, at you. What the hell are they doing? Like, oh my god! Like, Dance. And I'm like, I don't know how to dance. Just, just do anything. We just want to see you move. I'm like, oh my lord! To, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay, I, I, yeah. And they they left after. I'm like, okay, they're never gonna call me back. Yeah. And they did. Like two weeks after, they're like, oh my god, I want we want you to move to to Korea. Uh-huh. And that's when it hit me. These guys aren't legit. Uh-huh. If they were legit, they would never consider to actually call me back. <laughs> or even like after seeing me sing that day, they would have stopped there. <laughs> oh, at the poses, they would have stopped there. Uh-huh. And then and then they were like, they were just explaining to me like what JYP was, like who was in JYP. There's um JY Park, there was Rain, mm. there was G-O-D, there was a bunch of other people. Like Rain worked with Will Smith, Rain worked right. with this and that person and I'm like nope still no like but then I I, I talked to my grandmother uh. who was a fan of Full House uh. Rain back uh. back then Full House drama Full House was so big in right, Thailand right and she was like it's the same company that Rain's in so you, you gotta go mm. so thanks to my thanks, thanks to my to grandma. thanks to my thanks to my grandmother um, I got to be here. <laughs> That's wild. I mean, okay, but like, first of all, thank you for sharing that incredibly embarrassing story. Yeah. I yeah. think I got red listening and yeah. imagining you in uh, oh the God. walkway. Yeah. Uh, but I'm glad you went through it because yeah. you're here. <laughs> like, every time I think about that night, it's like, life is really funny. Yeah. Where… Like this, this path, this journey in your life, where it leads you. Mm. Of course, you're you're the one who makes the decision, mm. but then you're not the one controlling. Your right. Life. It's like a greater power, yeah, or like, God, or like, whatever. You I'm, believe I'm in. Buddhist, but I believe in like greater, greater power, uh-huh. higher power that kind of like guides you through right, right, this right. life mm. without making you do anything. Yeah. You're just there, just floating. Life. Life. It's just life. But so what What got you to… Other than… I mean you were saying you had no interest in doing anything entertainment. So what was it? Was there a moment where you're like… Oh okay well I guess I should try it. Because just because grandma says… Oh same company doesn't mean you're going to be like… Oh I want to try being a singer. Or whatever. Actually I… My my head was just blank back then. Like right. I didn't have a future. Like Because um, towards… Actually, towards junior and senior year, uh-huh. um, I was actually getting out of line. Uh, Not really showing up to school, okay. like, hanging out with my friends. It wasn't even like partying or like bad things. I was I was hanging out with my friends playing badminton. <laughs> it's so stupid. I mean, I ditched school to go play badminton in San Gabriel. Dude. Nikun was a rebel. It's so stupid. Like <laughs> it wasn't like, hey man, I was at this great party. I was go, oh man, oh god. It wasn't that. It was like, hey, come out. My friend, like my friend who was in college, he was yeah. like, this is eleven a.m. Yeah, probably like second, second on the way period. to like third period. Yeah. He's like, hey, come out. I'm in the parking lot. Okay, let's, let's go, go play, play badminton. Bad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the best thing ever. <laughs> That's hilarious. And I mean, um, yeah, I was getting out of line. I, was, I wasn't I was really going to school. And my dad was like, you gotta go. Uh, this, is, this is your chance to turn your life around. You gotta uh, okay. go. And at that point, I, I was really guilty for, not, mm. for, for being bad. That I uh, had no say in, in, in the matter. Okay. I mean, I, I did, this is the first time I've… I've Told this story, so my fans wouldn't even know. Oh wow! Until today, until now. So yeah, that's that's the reason why I came. It was, it was because I was being a bad boy. <laughs> I was being really naughty, playing badminton. Yeah, playing oh. badminton. But but you play? Did you play like competitively? Yeah yeah yeah. I was uh, I was um, actually 
the school I was playing for the school. I was playing a lot in Thailand too. I was oh, okay. playing in tournaments and stuff. So you're like semi pro competitively. I was actually or were you pro pro? My dad was gonna put me in um like um what do you call it? A, a sports school? Oh okay okay like a training yeah. academy athletic athletic Athl- school. So I don't know like what that. you call yeah. them, but um it's so where you would have to go to school. Oh, you have to wake up in the morning, run, go to eat, go to school, and then afterwards you would have to just play badminton all uh-huh. all day, all night. So I was gonna actually go professional, but oh wow, luckily I didn't. And you came to Korea. And then I came to Korea. Man, so dad and grandma really got you here. Oh yeah. And badminton. Oh yeah. Truly, it's, that's <laughs> an incredible story. <laughs> Thank you, badminton. <laughs> um, this is for you. Yeah, but like, okay, so you get here, you are put into training. Yep. And you guys, you know, you train for how long? For I train for about two years. For two which years. Which is short. Yeah, relatively short. Relatively short for someone with no talent. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, like so like the first couple of months, um, I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. Like everyone who, who was training, they were already somewhat good. Uh-huh. Because they wanted to be in JYP. They wanted right. to be a singer or something. So for the first, I'd say like six months, I was it was really hard for me because mm. they kept comparing me to to these other guys. Were like, how come you're not improving? How come you're not as good as they are? And I just wanted to shout back, like, you already knew <laughs> what I could do, which was nothing, and you still chose to bring me here, and now you're looking into my face and saying, scolding me, saying oh that I'm God. not good. I wanted to say that, yeah. but I couldn't. Um, anyway, for the first six months, um, yeah. I was in that loop, right? And then I got so sick of it. I'm, I called my dad. I'm like, dad, I got, this is not for me. Mm. I'm going to go back to the States and, mm. and go to school. And dad was like, hey, this is like a one in a million chance right. that, that you would be here or anyone would be here. Try it out. F- f- you know, fill up a whole year. And right. if you still not into it, you can go back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, so I turned my head around, said to myself, since I hate being called mote, like you can't, can't do you, it. You're, yeah, you can't do it. Uh-huh. I heard, I, I hate that word. I hated that word so much mm. that I told myself, I'm going to improve myself until I don't hear that word anymore. Mm. So that's when I like, I just started like training really hard. So I mean that's that's uh must have been tough. It was tough. It must have been really tough. Cuz um imagine you going into a new country where you don't know the language, the culture or you don't know yeah and you don't know any anyone there. Mm. You have no friends there, no family. And then you have to go into this kind of like a boarding school right where everyone else is already like in third grade and you're in the first grade. Yeah. Or you know, like you have to try to catch up to them. Yeah. Which was not easy at all. Uh-huh. It was like a lot of pressure. And and of course, like they, were go- they say you're going to have to debut in like a year mm. after a year. And I'm like, no, I'm not ready. <laughs> hey, I'm not ready. Why? No, why so quickly? But um, yeah, that's when I, I started to boost myself. Yeah. Um, to, to go faster. Yeah. Well, I mean, so, so obviously you, you made the team. Uh, part of it was through like a reality series you guys did, right? Like a yeah, yeah. Audition um, com- competition program, I yeah. guess. Uh, it was called Hot Blooded Guys, uh. um, Yoda Lama, where it's like thirteen of us, mm-hmm. fourteen of us. They were gonna divide us into two groups. One is the ballet group, and one is a dance group, mm-hmm. which was two a.m. and two p.m. Right. So through that, we became two a.m. and two p.m. Okay. Yeah. How did it feel when you became part of the group? Did you know? Like you had to have known something, right? It's like… Well, I knew I was going to be in the group. Uh Because they need a face, you know. (laughs) (laughs) I'm so sorry. I'm I'm going to apologize. You know what? We like this honesty. (laughs) You know, we have to go ahead and say it. You're a good looking guy. Thank you. Thank you. But um, nonetheless, I I still trained really hard. Uh, Yeah, I'm sure. It was like a talk in the company that you're you're, uh, you're you're chosen. Uh. But it wasn't like I was going to be like… Hey. Arrogant about it or anything. Yeah. 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 So… But yeah. But I still… I, yeah, I was really… Once I became 2 p.m. It was so surreal. Mm. 
that I didn't know the concept of being in a boy band. Of what it was. Like what I had to do. Like it was just like me. You know how like there's like a robot where like a little guy is controlling it mm-hmm. in, inside the Like brain. Men in Black? Yeah. Like I the was little that alien, little guy. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. And and this guy was doing… Oh no. I wasn't even this guy. This guy was the company. Uh-huh. And I was the robot. Okay. So I was doing whatever I was told to do. Uh-huh. And I tried to do it as best as I could. Uh-huh. As well as I could. And that's… I think for the first couple of years… That's how I lived. Mm. As, as Nikun from 2PM. Mm. As the guy who has to do what he's told as well as possible. Mm-hmm. And not make mistakes. Right, right, right. So it was like a time where like… Just kind of like flashed through, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, cu- I couldn't remember a lot of it. Uh-huh. I mean, it's… I remember when you guys debuted. This is just like me watching from wherever I was living, right? It was like 2 p.m., Wonder Girls, Big Bang, like that generation. Um, you guys came onto the scene and it was like incredible response. Yeah, we did something different, which was um, like all the acrobatics. Acrobatic, flipping around. Flipping around and um, yeah, um, so like the last… So like a year before we, we mm-hmm. actually came out, uh, made a debut. Um, they told us that if we couldn't do the um, tumblings, these moves, um, they weren't going to make us debut. debut. So yeah, that's, we trained really hard for uh. that. And we got hurt a lot. Because you, 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 usually you have to start with like just stretching. The basics. That's the, that's the true basic of… of of acrobatics. So you have to be really flexible. Mm-hmm. And look at Tech. Like he can't… <laughs> Dude's built he like… He can't sit down a like… A Cross legs… Leg like, like like this. He has… It's like… He… Yeah. He's just stiff and <laughs> tall. <Yeah>. And stiff. And <laughs> even the teachers… Like they were like… Tech and Chan Song will never be able to flip. Ah. Uh-huh. But then they did it anyway because oh they had to. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We, we did something different and it worked. Mm-hmm. It worked. Um, so we have to, we have to thank um, Jin Young Young. Mr. Yes. J.Y. Park. Yes. Thank um, you. I remember Brian Young K was on mm-hmm. and he was like, I, they told me I wouldn't be able to debut until I did a flip. <laughs> and so I worked so hard flipping and flipping and I finally got it. And then they told me I was in a band. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, oh man, that's brutal. But at least you learn how to flip. Yeah. Um, but like, I guess, you know, going, having that much success as soon as you debut, mm-hmm. also just being so busy. Because I remember you guys were everywhere on we, everything. We were really busy. And I was, at the time, I was working a lot in Thailand as well. Oh, okay. Um, so it was a lot of flying, yeah. flying around. And yeah, we were really busy. We, we, we slept on the plane a lot. Mm. We lived on a plane um, quite a lot. Yeah. How, I mean, was there ever a point where you were just like exhausted or burnt out? Like, I can't do this anymore. Because I feel like that's something that these days, it's more acceptable for an idol or somebody to be like, I, I need a break. Mm-hmm. But back then, this is on what? This is 10, 12 years, 12 years ago. 12 years ago. Because you guys, yeah, congratulations did, yeah. on Thank 12 you. years, Thank by you. the way. That's also a different era. Yeah. Of working style or ethic even. Because back then, like I said, we would have to do what we were told. Mm. It wasn't like, hey, I don't want to do this. Yeah. I don't feel comfortable. Yeah. We couldn't, we couldn't really speak up. Because yeah. it's, like it's like an Asian culture thing where mm-hmm. you're not supposed to speak up to older people. Right. Or your boss or, or like, you know. But this is that… There's nothing wrong with that. It's just a different generation. Right. And now it's a little different, mm-hmm. you know. Which is good. But yeah, back then, I couldn't say that I didn't want to do something mm-hmm. until I think six years in. Oh, wow. That was 2014. I, I believe it was. I was filming a drama in China. Uh-huh. And um, we had to do this JYP Nation concert. Where uh-huh. it's like a JYP family concert right. in Japan. So I flew back. I was filming pretty much Every day, right? Uh-huh. And had to flew back. I had to fly back to to Korea to practice. And then we we flew to Japan to to perform. 
And af- after that night, I would have to fly back to China. Oof. And I was performing. And at one point, I thought to myself, why is it so hard to smile? Uh. Like, I couldn't even do this. I was like… Because I'm so burnt out that I'm right. just like… So when I sing, I, I give it everything. But when, I'm, when it's like a talk time, I'm yeah. just like… Quiet. And I'm like… This is hard. Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. And I, after I got down, I talked to the, the CEO. I was like, I can't keep doing this. Like, mm. I feel like it's not fair for the fans or, and for the, the team members right. that I'm performing with. So starting after this drama, I'm going to take less like, um, personal, individual mm-hmm. activities. Yeah. Just to focus more on, 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 on 2 p.m. Because we were, we were working a lot in Japan as well. Yeah. So we, I would do like maybe like just hengsa, like a one-day event. That's yeah. fine. But like a three-month drama or like two-month uh, movie shoot, I, I'm not going to do that. Or, unless it's like a, like a free, t- free term for, for me to work. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Because I don't think… It, it, was, it wasn't fair for anyone. Mm-mm. If I was… If I couldn't… If I wasn't able to give it 100%. Yeah. With, in whatever, whatever I was doing. You know? Yeah. Man. That's… Exhausting. It's really. exhausting. Because uh, actually my fans mm-hmm. did like this, um, this thing where they sum up… They summed up like what I was… How, how many times I flew that year. The, I think this was, was 2014. Just, just for work-related um, yeah. flights. I think it was 100 something times. <gasps> and it, I could fly around the world four and a half times. Oh my gosh. With the mileage I, I flew That's that, that year. wild. It was wild. Like, and that's the thing. Like when you're that busy… You don't remember like… What made me happy that year? Right. So I said, I, I told myself, slow down. Yeah. Slow down. Money is not an issue here. Right. Um, if, if you earn all that money and you get sick or, you know, you're not mentally healthy or physically healthy, you're not going to be able to spend that money. Yeah. I agree or you spend you. it on hospital on bills. On hospital bills, yeah. And I'm like, I'd rather be happy, mm. you know, and I get to spend time and make memories with the people that I love, yeah. with my family. That's, I think, I think a, a year after that, I started taking um, um, family trips. That's good. Either in Thailand or yeah. I, we go to, to the States. We do like a road trip. Like mm. every year. Mm. I try to make it. Like this year too. Yeah. That's, that, that's your, what, what… Your wine trip. Yeah. Winery trip. Oh, it's so good. Oh, I'm so jealous, you dude. Have, you have to go, man. <sighs> I mean, I think that's incredibly important. I wish that's something that I could do more of too. Um, you should though. You should. Yeah. It's… Remember last year, I had like a lot of health issues. Because mm. like, like you, like you are saying, like when you're going so fast… Like there are moments now where people are like, do you remember that show you did? It's like, I did that? Yeah, you did this show in like this country. It's like, I did? <laughs> are you sure it was me? He's like, yes, you sang this. You did this. It's like, I don't know. Might yeah. have been an Eric Kim or something. Yeah. Like, I don't know. But it's, it is definitely very, very important to, to take that kind of time off. But, you know, you've been doing this for 12 years now, mm-hmm. right? What have you kind of defined as meaningful to you? Not only, you know, just in life, but professionally. Like, what are the projects that really get you excited? I think first, I think about what my fans would want to see. Uh-huh. Even if it's a small, small project, if, if, I, if I think about it and I think my fans would like to see uh-huh. me in this light, in this angle, then, you know, i do it. Mm. Other than that, I think… About like like let's say acting. Um, I'm not trying to like stop just in Asia. I'm trying to you know branch out to to Hollywood, right? And I'm trying to do that. So so I think like the projects that I take on is are like are like us are like stepping stones uh-huh. to to that point where I I can take off and and go to uh, like a bigger platform. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I think about the future a lot when I take on up. Because yeah. I, I don't want to waste my time doing something. Yeah, no, that that's fair. It's meaningless, you know. It's just, I'm not like, I'm not thinking much about how much I would earn from doing this project mm-hmm. or that project. Of course, it's that something we, because it's you our can't job. ignore it. I but, can't ignore yeah. it, but like, that can't be the main principle that made the main reason why I choose to do something. Right. Unless you give me like a hundred million dollars. Yeah, if you give me a hundred, even a hundred thousand dollars, guys, I mean, just (laughs) let me know. What do you need me to sell? What do you need me to sell? (laughs) But yeah, um, 
Yeah, I mean, speaking of, you know, wanting to, you know, I guess you started this without having like that much of like, oh, I'm going to be a singer. Like it just kind of happened, mm -hmm. right? Was there a certain point where you're like, I now have a dream or I now have a goal or a purpose as you were doing all this? Was there a moment or something like that that kind of came together for you? Not really. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, well, our, our, our goal was at first um, was to, to, to be first place mm. in like um, Tezan. Right. At, um, at like a, to get a, the biggest That's award ever. In Korean music industry, yeah. like the biggest possible award. And then we got that. And then there's a next goal where we want to perform at Tokyo Dome, mm. where um, with the capacity of like 50,000 people. Yeah. And we did that twice. I don't know if you remember this. I was there. That, it's fine. <laughs> so this is a very embarrassing moment for me. But this was. I I was interviewing people for Section TV uh -huh. as a reporter. Uh -huh. And they're like, you're going to Tokyo. I was like, why? It's like, to interview 2 p.m. I was like, for what? And they're like, they're in Tokyo doing a concert. I was like, Help so me. why is this? Why does this? Why? And then, <laughs> <laughs> and, like, why? and then I was like, they're like, oh, well, this is like a huge, huge deal to be uh -huh. doing Tokyo Dome. For people who don't know, it's a massive accomplishment. It is. One night is 50,000 people, uh -huh. right? Two nights is 100,000 people. Mm -hmm. And so we were there. I went backstage to interview you guys. And there's. I'm glad you don't remember because my Korean was so bad. I was terrified. Because I was like, God, oh, I have to ask these questions in Korean. <laughs> and it was probably you and Tech who were like, just… You guys just mm -hmm. helped me get through mm -hmm. it. Because I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm literally reading off the cue cards. Wow. But anyways. This is, I think this was 2013 or 14. 13 or 14. Or right around there. That's right, right when there. I started doing that job. Yeah. Wow. So anyways. Sorry. <laughs> well, yeah. But then um, that was our… At one point, that, that was our ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. And then we achieved that. And then what's the next level? What's the next thing? I can't really answer that. It's just like… Mm. We just have to keep going, you know, like… We just have to do… Okay, maybe my goal right now is to get into Hollywood. Mm. Um, to, to be in the scene, to, to, to do movies and, 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 you know. But if that doesn't happen… Just… Just anything… Yeah. That would make my fans happy, you know, yeah. like… Would, would, would be enough. I mean, that's great. I think part of that comes from the fact that I feel like you're very much at peace with your life and mm -hmm. happiness and you're very well balanced in many ways. That's, I think that's like the, the best vibe, the best way to describe how mm -hmm. I see you mm -hmm. is that amidst all the success and the cool projects that you do, mm -hmm. you still make time for yourself. Mm -hmm. Be that, you know, working out, playing golf, mm -hmm. whatever it is. And so it seems like it's a very well balanced thing. It is. And and I'm very thankful that I'm that way. But in a professional point of view, mm. it's kind of too early to be like that. Oh, you think so? I, I think so. Really? Why? I think I have to be more… To be hungrier. Oh, okay. To, to achieve more. To mm -hmm. do more. To get more. To be more. And I'm at… Like you said, I'm at a point, a, a point where I'm just okay with being me. Mm. I'm happy. Yeah, I'm happy with the people I have in my life, and I'm happy that I have the time to spend with the people that I have in my life. Yeah, but as an artist, it's never enough. You know, mm. you get you become you get the first place in Korea, and now you want to get the first place in Asia, mm. and after that, you want to be first in Asia, I mean, in, in the world, yeah. like B BTS. Yeah, and then like that's what. I, I was listening to the radio. They were saying, you know, after they they heard the news that they they were first um, on the Billboard charts. Yeah, they they cried. Yeah, a lot. And then that's what hit me. Like, what's next for them? Uh -huh. It's never enough. Like, uh -huh. It's never enough. So so like, is it right for me to say that it's enough right now? Is it is it too early or is it the right timing? Mm. So that's my struggle right now. That's what now. you're figuring out yeah, right now. I'm trying to figure out like, okay, I'm, I'm, I want to get into Hollywood. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, I know like I have to work harder. Well, I have no doubt you'll, you'll get there. Mm -hmm. I feel like 
your story in itself is is incredible. And just knowing… Like, I feel like I'm the type of person who's just like… Good guys need to finish first. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like that's always like the underdog story. But I feel like yeah. you're one of those guys who will who will get there. You're going to do really cool things. Thank you. And um, you, you just did so much at a young age. <laughs> which is… Which is awesome. Um, speaking of like the like artistry and music, like you know, obviously you have two PM and a huge discography there, but then mm-hmm. you also have some solo projects that you do solo. I think like showcases and concerts um, and all that. Kind I of stuff. I released um, two solo albums mm-hmm. in in mostly in Japan, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, first album I also also released in Korea and China as well. So that that was something really new to mm. me because I never thought of myself as a as a singer in mm-hmm. 2 p.m. And for me to step out of my comfort zone and I actually made my first album pretty much by my not not by myself but I made it myself. Mm-hmm. I, I wrote the I wrote like the the music along t- together with some really um, talented people. Yeah, and it was weird because it was something that I never thought I would do. Mm-hmm. To be on on the stage by myself. Singing yeah. and dancing. Playing the piano, guitar, what, whatnot. But I surprised myself that… Oh man. If I, if I would just set my mind to it, I could actually do it. Mm. Because I, I was never, never confident in my singing. Mm. Uh, because with 2PM, I, I could hide behind them, you know. And the reason why I wanted… I was I I released that album the solo album was because I promised the fan that fans that I would come up, I would do something uh. to remind them of 2 p.m. and and that's 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 why I, I made that album did a, a, a like a solo concert tour and I sang a lot of 2 p.m. songs just to remind them that you know we we will be together again yeah. type of thing I so mean, it was it was a, like so new like I look at you you're on tour by yourself singing for like what over 2 hours pretty yeah. much about that yeah. and and at first before I released my 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 first album I was like man that's something that looks so cool like you look so free you look so happy and at the same time you're like so good up there I'm like thank you <laughs> can I do that like before, before my first concert, mm. I was preparing for it. Right. And I saw all my members' um, solo concerts, mm-hmm. except for Chan Songs, <laughs> because I didn't. I was I, I was filming something, so I couldn't go. But um, I looked at them like, damn, they're good. Yeah. And now it's my turn. Like I'm, I, I am two p.m. Mm-hmm. I can't let this name down, you know. <laughs> like, so I, I, I practiced so much yeah. that you know, that I think I did okay. What I'm sure you did great. I mean, <laughs> I wasn't there to see it, but uh-huh. you know, just I'm sure people loved it. What what did it feel like when you finally wrapped it up? And I don't know. Big sigh of relief. It, it was yeah. <laughs> it was a big relief that I I I ended it without that many mistakes. Because yeah. when you're live, you, yeah. there's always it's mistakes. Always. You know? But without any big mistakes, where you know that would be like obvious. So it it was a big relief for me, and I just I think I just smiled at myself, mm. saying I'm proud of you. Yeah, I know you're not like the best you can be, or you're not the best singer out there, but you broke the shell. You like you tried it, and you, I think you succeeded. Yeah, that you know, Kun, if you really want it, you can have it. You can do anything. Amen. Hallelujah. Any, I, mean, I want to. That's why, like, that's what I was saying on stage too. Uh, like, I want to tell, like, anyone out there who are like confused and and like not sure about themselves, that if if whether you could do something, except for, other than like you know having wings and and flying, mm. you can do anything that that you set your mind to. Like, if mm-hmm. you really want it and you've practiced and you work for it hard enough, you can do it. Yeah. Any, any, anything, anyone. I, 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 I agree. It's not easy, right? but you can do it. And I think that's part of, I think so much of, across all the podcasts that we have here, when artists come on and they're speaking about mm-hmm. the trials and tribulations, the ups and downs, that's I think what really our listeners 
really connect well with. Yeah. And, and you guys are hearing it again. Kun says it too. You can literally do anything. Well, he wasn't born just with this great voice. <laughs> there was a time where he couldn't sing. When Not he couldn't like sing. This. And then it was probably too long for too long ago for you to actually remember the struggle you had to go through to get you know good at singing. It was right. All of it's work. It's just hard work. It's just hard. It's work. effort. It's that's ambition. All, like, it's hard work, and that's what it is. I mean, for people who are you know, you know, waiting for two p.m. Mm-hmm. Right. I, I've seen on your socials, uh, you guys have been doing a bunch of events, a um, bunch of things. Uh-huh. Well, tell us about that. What's going on? So we're doing a little side project called Taeyang Hyungom, uh, which is Taeguk Yanggo Hyunje Gomshin. So um, that's what we're doing. We're just doing a bunch of silly stuff. Okay. And then and recently we did um, like a live show, oh. kind of like a special event fan meeting type uh-huh. of show, where we we sang a couple songs as well, and and actually Tech showed up. Oh, okay. As a special guest at at the end, and everyone went crazy. <laughs> Yeah, and a lot, a lot of fans are, are wondering why tech is not included mm. included in this this project. Yeah, tech is actually not in JYP anymore. Oh, okay. He's he's in another company, so it's like kind of like a hybrid. Like it's kind of complicated, right? Right. To, right. to cross over, so we we just invite him over um, for whenever he has. Is he time. focusing? I mean, obviously he's yeah, still he's, part of Two PM, but he's still focusing more on acting right now. That's why he time. went out to like okay. a, a like um. Um, what do you call it? An actor company. Company, yeah. Because he wants, uh, he wanted to focus more on it, on his um, acting, mm-hmm. and now he's filming both movie and a drama at the same time. <laughs> so it was hard f- to to for him to actually find time to come out right uh, on, on that day. But but he, he made said it. he's two p.m. no matter what, oh. and this is is a special day, and he would come out any like anyway. I mean when. You know, I, I look at you guys and you guys have this brotherly bond that I feel like exists more stronger, more strongly. Someone help my English. More stronglier. More, <laughs> more stronger. More, stronglier. <laughs> more stronger than I guess just some a lot of other groups. You know, there's something about you guys, at least from from the way it appears, you guys seem like just legit, legit brothers. We are, we are, and and I don't know about other teams. I don't know what made us to to become this close, mm. but I think it's just destiny, you know, that mm. we we just just the right six people met, mm. and we just became brothers. Yeah. At first, it was more like um, it was a little bit of a competition, like rivalry, a little mm-hmm. bit in the in the beginning yeah. because we were fighting to 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 be on screen more. Mm-hmm. To have more airtime and whatnot, but throughout the years, throughout all the, the 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 good and the bad things that happened, it just made us realize that no one actually cares about us as much as we do each other, mm. and that we saw it firsthand that no matter what we're gonna stick together, and yeah. no matter what we're gonna understand each other, yeah. um, compromise. And I think that's when it hit us that, you know, brothers from another… From another mothers. mother. Yeah, from other mothers. Brothers from other mothers. From other mothers. Um, that's kind of weird. It, mother. <laughs> brothers from other mothers. Just… Yeah. Yeah. We'll leave it there. Well, fingers crossed. We have, fingers a, crossed. We have a new 2 p.m. album sometime in the near future. Hopefully um, at mid next year. Okay. Mid… Um, 2021. Speaking of 2 p.m. music, though, like, do you have a favorite comeback or favorite title song of 2 p.m.? It's either I think it's either Heartbeat or mm. or My House. What is it? Oh, okay. Very both are very different songs. So, what is very different? But I think the concept, mm. the concept of both um, of both songs were just perfect. Uh. Like like with heartbeat, you know, zombie uh, concept, and and like with all the makeup, like with all the like, and the dance too, mm. which is it just expresses um, the song really well. Mm. And for Urije, for my house, just like our get up from our get up to like the dance and everything, it just it's just mature and and casual in a way, but sexy in another. Mm. 
which was which was exactly the the whole song. Right, 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 right. And then <laughs> um and then we took it down to again and again, just like right. regular idol songs. And then all of a sudden, hands up, let's drink, oh, let's party, let's, let's, let's party. put your hands up. And like we were just like kind of like a group that never cared, yeah, about. The public that much. Mm. We just wanted to sing what we wanted to sing. Mm. Which is great. Yeah. I mean, you know, you are now at JYP. You're at Isha, right? Oh, yeah, kind of. Yeah. Kind of. I, what Do you have like a particular role there? No, what is, I don't. Okay. Yeah. It's You're just, just there it's just for a title. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, I feel like you are there and you have so many Hubez mm-hmm. who look up to you, who probably come to you with a lot of questions mm-hmm. or for advice. Mm-hmm. You know, are there particular members in like let's say GOT7 or uh, Stray Kids that you have really connected well with that you know? Uh, with GOT7, I, I would have to say Bam Bam mm. because um, he's, uh, he's, he's also, also Thai. And um, I look at him as, as my little brother mm. where I kind of feel sometimes somewhat responsible for his well-being or mm. his… Um, for him. Yeah. Just because he's from Thailand and, he, yeah. and he's… He's… Young. Yeah. And I just… I want him to grow up to be as good of a person as possible. Mm. And I, I… This is how I look at like the younger… Especially younger guys. That I want to give them as much advice as possible. So that they won't have to go through the hard times that I had mm. to go through. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like some some of the things I learned throughout my life were from hard times. Mm. So I like to I like to tell them to you know how to avoid that mm. to 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 go around right. the problem and then just you know shortcuts. Yeah. And maybe stray kids probably Chani mm. Hang Chan because uh, mainly because he speaks English mm. and he's not afraid to talk to me. <laughs> like the other kids are like when I say hi, I'm like, hi, I'm trying to like hug them like… Yeah. So I'm kind of like, mm, okay, it will take time. No, like, I remember Punk, the first time I met him, he was like, oh, if you have any questions about us, blah, blah, let me know and I got to help. And I was like, thank you. Yeah, he's very… He's, he's very, very outgoing. Yeah. He's very mature for, uh, for his age. Yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So lastly, my last question I guess about uh-huh. JYP and everything is… I'm personally, and people who listen to this podcast know that I'm personally just fascinated by Mr. JYP himself. Mm-hmm. Because I think he's, uh, I think he's in many ways a visionary and he also thinks differently as a CEO, like owner slash artist. Mm-hmm. What are your like key takeaways from him? Like what have you learned from him? He's, he's like a racehorse. Where uh-huh. you know how they have that that cover the face cover where it's like they oh can it's only just like see the focus forward. yeah he's like that when he's when he wants something when he want he when he he's working mm. he doesn't he doesn't like he doesn't get distracted he just he's very to himself he just is this is what I'm gonna do and this is how I'm gonna do it he's very what do you call it very direct mm. and I think that's a very good thing be. Being an artist. Right. Because you don't want to get distracted by other people's opinions or other people's styles. Because then you can… Because you have your own color. You have your own, you know, scent. Mm. You don't want to get mixed up with other people's stuff. Right. And he's he's the guy where this is me. Mm. This is how I'm feeling. And this is how I'm going to express my feelings into a song. Mm. So that's how he wrote all those songs for for so many artists. Massive hits. Like last year, I th- yeah, last year he did a a concert where he, I think he had like he has like over fifty number one like hit songs, <laughs> and he put that's pretty crazy. much all of them in one concert. That's insane. Yeah, it was. Rain, rain came out. Um, other people came out. Man, it was, it was crazy. Oh man, he's very. I respect him so much. Mm. How dedicated he is to his work. Mm. Like he would he would work on a song until like four or five in the morning. Right. It's just like I have to do this now. Yeah. I remember I recorded 
Hanipun uh. at five in the morning because Sheesh. he said he was going to finish it that day. And before that, he, he, he recorded Juno at starting at like 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. He was very hands on with you guys, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And up until, up to, up to like, until like a certain time and where he went, you guys are, you guys can take care of yourself. You guys are ready. I'm just gonna right. let you guys be. Awesome. But he, you know, it was kind of a sad time because before that, he would always, like, after every, like, every performance on TV, he would call us. Mm. Like, he, he wrote down everything, right? He mm. was like, okay, let me talk to Junke. Mm. Just say, blah, 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 blah. You mm. need to fix this, practice this. This was good. This was wow. bad. Okay, let me talk to, to Kun. Blah, wow. blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. He's like a, like a teacher in a way, but like a mm. f- father yeah, in yeah, a way yeah. to us. For, yeah. That's fascinating. That's incredible. I mean, oh, yeah. I, I think that's probably why so many artists at JYP are oh, successful. Yeah. yeah. And you a know? lot of people want to talk to him. A yeah. lot of people, a lot of artists from like, Outside of the company mm-hmm. to want to get in touch with him. Don't Me wanna, included, like, just dude. Talk to him. Get his insights about things, you know? Just, yeah. He's, I mean, he's such an artist, yeah. He is, he is. All right. Well, um, we have some questions. Not from me. We have some questions okay. from fans. Okay. And if you guys are listening, if you guys ever want to ask questions to people here at Dive, you can text us at 310-564-1030. Again, that's 310-564-1030 for your free trial. Sorry. Anyways, uh, you can also join us on our Discord server. We have over 20,000 people always talking about dive content there. So you guys can definitely check it out there or tweet it, Instagram it, whatever. Anyways, here we go. We have some questions. This is from L or Ellie in Mississauga, I think, Ontario. Okay. All right. Hi, Kuhn. My question is, if you could describe each 2PM member using an emoji, what emoji would they be? Wow. That's a that's the hardest question, question I've got <laughs> this year. Tech would be, I don't know for some reason I <laughs> I just picture that emoji where the little yellow guy is throwing up. Why? I don't know. I mean, no, no, <laughs> no. It's because his 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 color is green oh. and the throw up is green. Oh, okay. So that's the first thing that came to not I'm because sorry, he's, it's not because no, no. he's repulsive. No, you be not and it's not because you you throw up all the time. No, it's not that. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, it's just the color green. All right. All right. And Junke uh, Junke would be Junke would be that that purple devil. The purple smiling devil. purple devil. Why why that? Cuz he has this sexiness in him like okay. that he's not necessarily try to do uh-huh. it's just I don't know just the way he sings and like it's just in and him. I think it's because I've been watching um Lucifer on Netflix. Oh, you have? And, and How he, is that show? Oh, it's good. Okay, it's actually it's my second time. Oh, I'm rewatching really? it. Yeah, it's that good. Yeah. Okay, I have to check it out. And it's like the devil. It's just like that charm. Okay. Uyong would be would be that emoji where he goes like this. Oh, like the very prankster. Yeah, he's very cross-eyed. playful. He's very like. He likes to joke. He likes mm. to make people laugh. Chan Zong would be… He likes to just stare out into the empty space and just like… <laughs> like mong? Yeah, just mong. Just so that the, the no expression… The no expression gazing face. Gazing face. And Juno… If there's, a, if there's an emoji for big butt, that would be Juno. Is there? I don't… Huh? Oh, there's peach. a peach. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh my god. Does he have a big butt? Oh yeah. <laughs> He's known for it. Oh, okay. That he made me look really bad during the the My House um, performance, the chick cam. Oh, because he has like. Because a... like he's, I'm standing in front of. I uh-huh. think I was in front of him. Okay. And he was behind me, so I was supposed to look bigger. Uh huh. In those slacks, but no. He just got a big butt. I have a flat butt. Dude, I have a hamburger. I have a pancake butt. So why do why do men like, look? He says it hurts his back when he sleeps because his butt is his butt so, is so <laughs> out there. But so his spine I mean, is like so curved when he's. <laughs> it's 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 a fact. I have never it's heard this. I've never imagined that this could be a difficulty. It's a fact. Wow. You know that that game where you're like you break chopsticks. 
On your butt? Yeah. So it's like you you tie this um this rope to uh-huh. a, like a bar. Uh-huh. And then you tie at the end you tie um chopsticks uh-huh. and then you put it between your butt cheeks and then you lift as hard as oh. possible while flexing your butt yeah. to break the the chopsticks, the uh-huh. wooden chopsticks and he broke like 30 something. Wow. That's a, So it was like this big. It's a very strong butt. Oh yeah. Okay, Juno has a strong butt. Yeah, and so strong, we're going with muscly peach. butt. So he's a peach. How would what what emoji would you be? I'd just be a smiley face. Smiley face, yellow just sunshine. Normal just with your hoodie. smiley face. There you go. Uh, next question is from Ashley Tran in Temple City. If you were not a K-pop star, what do you think you'd be doing? Oh, I don't know. As, uh, when I was when I was in high school, I really I was really in, into photography. Oh, so maybe a photographer, okay. cool, or maybe a pianist of some sort. Because so I, I did you learn piano when you? were I younger? did when I was young. Yeah, I hated it. Yeah, right? me too. I hated it until I came to America and I heard "Kiss the Rain" for the first time by Kiss. Iruma. Oh yeah yeah yeah. And I was like, I have got to practice the song because I would get so many girls playing this <laughs> song. Oh, say that. Let me play some Iduma real quick. Yeah. Like, <laughs> hey, come over here. <laughs> and that's that's when I got hooked. Mm. You know, like I, that's when I was like, I really want to be good at piano. Mm. Just because I like being… I just want to be able to play the piano really well. Yeah. And then I came to Korea. Okay. All right. Last question from a fan. This is from Elise. What's your favorite Jelly Belly jelly bean flavor? Red. Red? I think that's strawberry, right? I have no idea. Or some type of berry. My question is who eats Jelly Bellies these days? I haven't had one in forever. Have you? Jelly beans? Yeah. I haven't had one in so long. Oh wait, Jelly Beans. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? I don't even… Can you even get those in Korea? Oh really? I don't know. Do you don't need to say that? I actually it to me. bought the Jelly Belly, the um, air fresh car air freshener. Oh really? So you are is it a thing you like Jelly Bellies or you just I like them. Okay. I just don't like the weird flavors. Like the Harry Potter. I like the original flavor. flavors. Yeah. Where it's just like red for Amen, strawberries or raspberries or something, and then yellow for lemon mm-hmm. or pineapple. Very straightforward. Yeah. Straightforward. All right. And I think that's it for his fan questions. If you guys have questions in the future, go ahead, text it to us or connect with us on our socials. All right. This is the last thing we're gonna do on this show. We're gonna uh-huh. do. We have the option of guess the song or speed quiz trivia or something. Speak quiz about what? I, it's about the most random stuff. I have no idea. Last time it was like, what's the capital of like Australia or something? I don't know. Let's do the quiz. Okay, let's do right? the quiz. It's more fun, right? Yeah. So the quiz, to, to explain to you, we have um, we have Jesse did 8. BM did 11? 10? Within how, within how it's long? It's 3 minutes. 3 minutes. And we're on the same team. Oh, okay. So we're, we're good. Okay, that's good. That's so we good. just go back and forth. Whoever gets it, we get it. We have three skips. and um, Three skips? Yeah. Okay. And Diane is going to read us the Please questions. don't do anything hard. There Please was one where hard. I was like, I have no idea. Oh, right. Okay. Colin's got the timer. And then I'm going to read it out. Two, three, two. Let's go. One. What are the five vital organs of the human body? <laughs> the five what? Vital organs of the human body. Brain. Heart. Liver. Kidney. Intestines. Bladder. Keep going. You're almost there. I don't know. Well, how, how, how many did we get? <sighs> oh, lungs. Lungs. Oh my <laughs> god. What okay, is next. the slowest moving mammal in the world? Snails? Oh wait. Mammals. Turtles? Armadillo. Sloth. Sloth. Correct. What is the freezing point of water in Fahrenheit? Zero degrees. In Fahrenheit. 34. 32. 32. What is the world's largest rainforest called? The Amazon. The Amazon. Correct. What is the lifespan or what was the lifespan of a Tyrannosaurus Rex? I don't know. Oh my god. 500 years. 300. Lifespan. I don't know. Not how long they existed for. (laughs) 50 years. 27. Up or or down. Can you do up or down? 50 years. Down. 60. 33. Down. 27. Sure. It's in the range. 20 to 30 years. <laughs> we go. What was the first animal to go into orbit? Monkey. Dog. Dog. 
Correct. Ooh. What Russian f- dog, right? I think. What food is the most ordered in America? Pizza. Pizza. Chicken wings. Chicken. Wings. Fried chicken. Fried that I'll let really? it count. Which two countries share the longest border? Um, Chile and… Nope. <laughs> China and Russia. Nope. What? U.S. Canada. U.S. Canada. Correct. Stratus, Cirrus, Cumulus, and Nimbus Clouds. are… T- oh, oh, yes. Wow. Yes. What is the most popular color for a car? Black, white. Red. White. White. What's the name of the river that runs through Egypt? Nile. Nile. What Dude, we're killing this. Yeah. What five colors are the Olympic rings? Blue, yellow, red, green, black. Correct. There's black? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who is the lead singer of Coldplay? Chris Martin. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. What is seven times eight? 56. Correct. You're good at this, man. <laughs> Which house was Harry Potter almost sorted into? Slytherin? Correct. Really? Oh. Really? And then what is the rarest blood type? Oh. AB. Negative. AB. AB? AB. Which U.S. state is known for peaches? Georgia. Yeah. Hey, good. <laughs> That's my, you know your stuff. Which company country. uses Santa Claus for their advertisements? Coca-Cola. Correct. Oh. What was the name of One Direction's first official single? I don't know. <laughs> you you want to skip? Yeah. Skip. <laughs> Sorry, fans. <laughs> um… What city is known as the city of love? City of Venice? love? Venice? Rome? Paris? What? Paris. Ding, ding, Woo! ding. Done. Damn, we, I think we got like 20. Yo, we killed yeah, it. Yeah, you guys killed it. What do we get? I think you guys literally got like… Uh, I want to say… 17? Where, where did we end? Where did, where did it just go? <laughs> Disappear. Oh, you guys got I think like 25? What? Dang. Yeah. Wow. That's going to be a record. No one's going to top that. Man. Nobody can beat this. No one's going to top Yo, that. We wow. All right. Well, um, if you guys want to see the other videos, you guys can check it out on our Patreon. Patreon.com slash Dive Studios. Um, Nikun, thank you so much for coming on today's show. Thank you, Eric. I mean, it really means a lot that you made time to come out. How was it? Be- this is your first podcast? It is my first podcast. How was it? How do you… How do you feel? I actually haven't… I haven't spoken English for this long. For so long. Because <laughs> usually it's just like… When we talk… We right, don't talk just... about like deep stuff. Uh, and um, I was, actually I was kind of nervous. Because really? living in Korea for 14 years now… Yeah. I, I don't… I barely use… I don't use English that much. And, and I was like… Can I speak English? Yes you can. But there you go. But yeah. Uh, it was really fun. Um, I talked about things that I never talked about. Because when you speak, when you do interviews in, in Korean or either in Korean or Thai, you, I tend to be more cautious about mm. the things I say. Yeah. So I tend to filter more. Mm-hmm. But when 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 speaking in English during an interview, it's more like relaxed and more yeah, yeah, yeah. forgiving mm-hmm. in a way. You're more free to express yourself yourself. So um, it was really fun today, and I talked about a lot of the things that happened in my life that yeah. I never talked and I, I never told anyone in an interview before so thank you well thank and you. I hope um, you guys like this podcast and keep watching his podcast <laughs> well thank you I mean it, thank you for sharing so much I know it's uh it's not easy to be as open as you were today mm-hmm. um, but I think you know I personally feel like I got to know you even better mm-hmm. and I think fans new and old probably got to see sides of you as well so Thank you so much. Best of wi- best wishes on all your future works. Anything you have coming up? Anything we should look out for? Where can people find you? Um, not much. Uh, I sh- I actually sh- I shot a um, a Thai ghost movie. Oh, last year it was supposed to be released um, in theaters in September. Right. Um, so we're still waiting for okay. an opening to to put it on screen. Uh huh. Um, but. But yeah, Thai movie. Um, I don't know how quiz quiz we are idol. Yeah, quiz we are idol. Something it's in idol English quiz. Idol quiz, probably. Something like that. And um, and maybe two PM channel. Yeah. On YouTube. There you go. Um, well, thank you again. As an outro, two things. A, can you teach me a cool Thai saying? And can you improvise any sort of outro jingle for us? I could just literally be like goodbye, like I always do, or <laughs> anything. Okay, um, a cool tie. 
cool tie. Something you could. What do you you want? Something you could say to to get girls or to your fans? To my fans. To your fans. To our okay. our fans in Thailand. Ru mai, wa rak. Ru mai, wa rak. Ru mai, wa rak. Do you know I love you? Oh, that's that's a good move. Ru mai, wa rak. Ru mai, wa rak. There you go. Okay, um, and that's it. I mean, if you want to just say goodbye, and that's it. You want me to sing for you now? You could sing, or you could just you could just talk us ASMR us out of it. Whatever you want to do. I'm gonna I'm gonna make up something for you. Okay, Eric and his Tebak show. <laughs> oh oh. Woo. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh man. Thank you, Nikki, for joining us. Everybody, Thank you. please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us. And uh, check us out on social, youtube.com slash dive pots and dive studios. We got more good stuff coming your way. Please stay healthy, wear a mask, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye bye. Hey guys, did you guys like that video? Then make sure you guys subscribe to Dive Studios YouTube channel and put your notifications on because we got a lot more great content coming your way. Look at this video. See? Wow. Wow. And this and this is great too. Enjoy.